other plants, other humans, other life, and other places have a different set of teachings. We here on this planet, we have a need for this fire, the sun. Without it, the earth would be no more. The earth would dissolve. So it is said that we are dependent upon the sun. It is the giver of energy. Brings many things upon the earth. It is set in motion this way. And I'm the last one. Is our mother the earth. Our mother the earth, who we are dependent for sustenance, food. We pray for the food. We understand the food. We can learn how to do this. So verse 8, you must always remember in your prayers. The unborn, the young, the old, the animal world, the fire, the water, the sun, and the mother here. There are eight of them. You don't need to pray for anything else. These eight covers the entire universe in, in your life. Your loved ones are covered in this. Everybody's covered. There's nobody left out. Even your dog is covered. Everybody's covered in this. When you think about these eight, at the end of your prayer, you say, all my relations. Now we'll stop there and ask you, do you have the right to say this? All my relations. Are you strong enough to say this? Is your mind, do you have no enemies? That's why you say this. Do you love all your brothers and sisters, even those who criticize you? Can you forgive? Because what it means. Are you strong to forgive? That you say all my relations at the end of a prayer, without your yasin. The person says, without your yasin, and what he is doing is saying, everybody. What you're saying is that forgive me, for I am weak. You're saying this to all the so-called enemies, critics, liars, people in prison, people in politics, all people in all walks of life. You say, without your yasin. All my relations. That is a very, very broad word. And there is nothing left. Negatives and positives, they're all out there. You come out of the sweat lodge, you say the same thing. You say, all my relations. You cannot come out of that sweat lodge until you say, all my relations. If you say, let me out, I'm not going to let you out. Until you learn how to say, all my relations. You can say it in your own language. It doesn't matter how you apply it. Can you say it? and really mean what you say. Because it's a little word, and yet it encompasses everything in life. It brings it all together. It's a big word. With these four, these eight you pray for, and this is what you decide to finish. It is not necessary for you to pick up a Bible and memorize verses of Psalms <coughs> from any one of the teachers of the Old Testament or the New Testament. It is not necessary for you to memorize these prayers made by the Bibles. It is not necessary. For they are there only for a purpose. In the very beginning of time, they were there so that the people will remember. In the Old Testament, it says, remember the tree of life. Only one sentence. It says, remember the tree of life. But this tree of life is the human. The life that we live. The tree of life. Also, in the Old Testament, it says, Behold the behemoth. Scientists today are looking at this behold behemoth, behemoth, something large and enormous. But they think about an animal. They think about the hippopotamus, a rhinoceros. They don't think about the ultimate power. Behold the behemoth. Behold the creator. And it would have been easier to put it that way. But in those days, wise men were egotistic. And they use words that you must look for the answers. Wise men, they teach you these things. Here you are, 90% I give to you, I'll teach you. You find 10%. That's what they're saying. They hold the brain. You find these in the Old Testament. You will never find them in the New Testament. In the New Testaments of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's completely deranged. It is not according to the teachings of Jesus Christ. For here are four people who put it in writing, each one understanding it in his own ways, so the confusion came from the New Testament. This what guides your life. 
has been misinterpreted. It will be that when I teach you now, you all leave and I tell you to write a story of what you heard. Each one will write about something different and then you will argue with one another. And say, no, he didn't say this. No, he did say this. No, he didn't say this. A poor person broad in mind and understanding will understand it. And he can write about it. This is what he was meant. This is what he said. But in order to do this, he must live it. I am not prepared to sit down in front of the prophet who is coming. And when he talks, my level of thought will be identical to his. And what he teaches, I can teach because I will be thinking just like him. For it has been escalated to that and will be rising above. I've learned from teachers also. I've learned from Maharishi Grewa and Maharishi Yogi. In India, are known as Maharishi Lengya. I'm also a Maharishi. I hold the same position on paper and in their teaching. That's why I'm a Maharishi. These are only titles. They don't mean nothing to me. They give you these titles, so people are impressed by titles. Doctors, you know, physician. Then they're very impressed. You see a doctor on there. I hold three doctor degrees at three universities. I'm never on as far as fifth grade. But I've earned these through life in, in such a short time. The work you do, <coughs> people see it and they help you along. What they think you should need to give to you. It's easy to give. It's easy to give out doctorates from different universities because it has a teacher. Oh, it's called a doctor. No. It doesn't mean nothing to me. In my world, of my teaching, for my grandfathers, those don't mean nothing. They do to you, but to me they don't mean nothing. Only titles. So, the funniest thing I have ever seen was in Switzerland. Two years ago. In the land of Switzerland. All the kings and queens were there, and the princes and the princesses.